Hello children. Today we are going to deal with poem 2 from the text First Flight, Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Robert Lee Frost was an American poet. His work was initially published in England before it was published in America. He is known for his realistic depictions of rural life and is the only poet to receive four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. Now, Fire and Ice is a short rhyming poem written by Robert Frost. The theme of the poem is the age-old question, how the world will end? And the poet gives us two options, either by fire or by ice, as suggested by the title. Probably, the poet is inspired by the Italian writer Dante, whose Inferno, the first book of his epic, Divine Comedy, deals with the subject of sinners in a fiery hell up to their necks in a lake of ice. Another source claims that the poem was created following a conversation with astronomer Harlow Shapley about the end of the world. The noted astronomer, when questioned by Frost, said that either the sun will explode or the earth will slowly freeze. Now coming to the poem, I'll just recite the poem. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I had tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Let us come back to the first stanza. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. So here the poet makes it very clear that it is not his opinion. Some say, stands for some people say. Some people say the world will end in fire. Some other people say that it will end in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, the third line. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Now the poet says that. Some people say world will end in fire and some people say world, in end, world will end in ice. Now from what the poet has known of desire, he stands with those who favor fire. Now what is the connection between fire and desire? Why has the poet said that from what he has tasted of desire, he holds with those who favor fire? Here, fire is symbolic. It is, the whole poem is symbolic actually and the fire stands for uncontrolled desires of humankind. Uncontrolled desires, wants, love, fury, etc. So, in other words, the poet is trying to tell us our uncontrolled desires lead to the destruction of the world. So that is why he says that from what I have tasted of desire, he has experienced that. I have tasted of desire. So he has experienced the power of uncontrolled desire. So from what I have known, I support those who favor fire. Now moving on to the second stanza. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate. He says that, okay, first he supports those who favored fire. Now, if it had to perish twice, if it, it stands for earth. Perish means die or come to an end. So, if earth had to come to an end twice, a second time, a second chance, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction Eyes is also great and would suffice. Again, what is the connection between hate and eyes? Yes, as fire stands for uncontrolled desires, eyes stands for hatred, cold reasoning. So he says that, I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, 
ayus is also great and would suffice suffice means be sufficient will be enough or in other words ayus is equally capable to destroy the world why what is the connection like ayus numbs our body hatred benumbs the mind and make us insensitive and cruel and thus lead to the destruction of the whole world so in short the speaker uses these natural elements of fire and ice as symbols for desire and hatred respectively arguing that both emotions left unchecked have the capacity to destroy civilization itself ice and fire though utterly different in the literal sense here represent one and the same thing the destructive potential of humanity either method will suffice to bring about the inevitable end of the world in just nine short lines then fire and ice offers a powerful warning about human nature it uses a conversational tone but deals with a very grave topic it deals with the end of the world now coming to the poetic devices there are quite a few which you are familiar with and two or three new topics let us discuss which you are familiar with first alliteration what is alliteration the repetition of consonant sounds in consecutive words so here favor fire for for the sound then again you have imagery imagery of fire and ice you get a visual imagery fire destructing the world then again metaphor as you know fire stands for uncontrolled desire and ice stands for hatred then you have personification fire and ice two inanimate things are given human attributes the power then again uh, you have assonance what is assonance repetition of vowel sounds in the same line look at the fourth line of the first stanza i hold with those that ho o long o sound hold those it comes in the same line that is assonance then again symbolism again fire and ice symbols of desire and uh, hatred then you have a new uh, uh, poetic device called anaphora the repetition of a word in the first part of some verses look at the first two lines some say the world will end in fire some say in ice that some say some say that is anaphora and one more is there that is enjambment what is enjambment a thought or a clause that does not come to an end at a line break look at the last second stanza from the second line i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice the line begins in the second line of the stanza and ends only in the last line the four, fifth line there is no it doesn't end at the line break that is called enjambment so this is the gist of the poem uh, all these poetic devices will be dealt with in detail in the notes hope it is clear to you thank you